Hello everyone, welcome to the video on alkyl halide properties and preparation. This video is made according to NCRT class 12 chemistry syllabus. This is of unit 10. Unit 10 is haloalkanes and haloarenes. And in this video I will explain alkyl halide properties like polarity, bond length, bond energy and dipole moment and preparations from alcohol, hydrocarbon and halide exchange. This is my YouTube channel. If you like the video content, do subscribe and share. In this video series, I will upload all the organic chemistry chapters of class 12 soon. Let's get into the topic. Now, first let us understand what do you mean by a polar bond. See, a covalent bond is formed by sharing electrons. So, carbon gives one electron and a halogen gives one electron. Both these electrons are shared together and forms a bond. So, every bond indicates combination of two electrons. Two electrons in combination forms a bond. Now, where do these electrons stay? With carbon or with halogen? In between them or towards carbon or towards halogen? This is determined by electronegativity of these atoms. Now, electronegativity scale is given by Pauling. According to this, the most electronegative atom in the periodic table is fluorine. The value is 4. After that, chlorine, bromine, iodine. The values goes down when you are going down in the group because the size increases and the electronegativity reduces. Now, when you see the carbon electronegativity is 2.5. Now, let us understand the bond between carbon and fluorine. Carbon electronegativity is 2.5, whereas fluorine electronegativity is 4. What do you mean by electronegativity? The ability to attract electrons is nothing but electronegativity. In simple terms, if an atom can pull electrons towards itself, that is what is known as electronegativity. So these electrons are pulled towards halogen, this halogen. So when electrons are pulled towards halogen, what happens? Electrons has got a negative charge, so it gets a partial negative charge, and carbon from from carbon electrons are moving away so it gets a partial positive charge so to getting charges like this is called as polarity or see when you see this it acquires two different poles kind of thing a negative pole and a positive pole hence it is called as polar bond so this is what is meant by polar bond now one more important thing see electronegativity of carbon and iodine both of them are equal 2.5 but still electrons are pulled towards iodine because see bond polarity is given by two factors electronegativity and polarizability polarizability means the ability to attract electrons again this is also similar kind of electronegativity polarizability means the ability to pull the electrons so that is more for iodine hence even though the electronegativities are same Again, electrons are pulled towards iodine. Now, when you see the pattern, because of increasing electronegativity, we'll have high bond polarity. Fluorine is most polar. Carbon and fluorine bond will have most polaric bond, whereas carbon and iodine, least polar bond. So, this is what is about a polar bond is. Again, let me tell you one more thing. See, halogens include fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and astatine is also there, but we don't read much about astatine because it is radioactive and very short living. So that is the reason why it is in all the reaction patterns it is eliminated and we see only about fluorine, chlorine, bromine and iodine. So this is about bond polarity. Now, bond lengths. Now let us understand what do you mean by bond length. See, bond length is because of the molecular orbital sharing electrons. Look at this, carbon is sp3 hybridized. So carbon will come with an electron and chlorine will have a lone pair of p orbital and it comes with this electron. So this overlapping orbital is what gives bond length. Now bond length is dependent upon <coughs> excuse me, atom sizes. See fluorine smaller atom so orbital will be smaller one whereas chlorine, bromine, iodine when you go down the group the size increases. When the size increases, again the orbital size is also increased. So what happens? The bond length increases. This is what you can see. By going down when the atom size is increased, the bond length is increased. Again here bond length is given in angstrom units. One angstrom unit is 10 to the power of minus 10 meters. Whereas in some textbooks it is also given in picometers. One picometer is 10 to the power of minus 12 meters. So one angstrom unit is equal to 100 picometers. 
So when you convert into picom <coughs> excuse me, convert into picometers, it becomes 139, 178, 193, and 214. Students, you need to understand this. You don't need to remember all these values. You don't need to memorize this. But understand the pattern, how it is going on. When you are moving from fluorine, fluorine, bromine, iodine, the bond length increases. That is what you need to understand. You don't need to memorize these values. You need to understand the pattern. Now, next thing. Now, you need to see about bond energy. Bond energy is also known as bond enthalpy. So, the energy required to break that bond is what is called as bond energy. So, look at this. This is directly proportional to bond length. See, here it is given in picometer. In brackets, you have in angstrom units. Now, shorter the bond, see, bonds will be like this. When you are going down, the bond length increases. This is what we have seen now. So, shorter the bond, stronger the overlap of electrons, and hence the, the bond energy is high. See, bond length is short, bond energy is high. When you are moving down, bond length is increasing, energy is decreasing. <clears throat> Again, you need to understand this pattern with the reasoning. Why is this happening? Shorter bonds are always stronger bonds because greater overlap of electrons. When the bond length is increased, the overlap of electron is reduced and the bond strength is reduced. Again, you need to understand this pattern. When you are moving down this groove, the bond energy is reducing. <coughs> Again, we don't need to remember <laughs> this. Again, don't need to memorize these values, but just understand the pattern. While going down, the values goes down. <coughs> Now the next property is dipole moment. See, dipole moment of a molecule determines the polarity of a chemical bond. How polar the bond is determined by dipole moment. <coughs> it is given by certain values. Now how is this calculated dipole moment is given by mu. It is a product of charge multiplied by the distance between them. What is the charge? What is this charge? And how much is the distance? When you multiply this, you will get the value of dipole moment. It is <coughs> it is determined in Debye units. Now, when you see the order, look at this order. Again, see the values. See, out of all the series, chlorine has got highest value. After that comes fluorine and then bromine and iodine. Why the uh, order is slightly different? Now, understand this. See, although fluorine is most electronegative than chlorine, the dipole moment is lower due to its shorter bond length. Why dipole moment is given by charge multiplied by distance between them. The distance is very short in case of fluorine, hence it is the value is less than chlorine. So again you need to re understand this pattern. See for all these properties we need to understand the pattern. You don't need to remember the values, you need to understand the pattern. When you put everything together, see bond lengths, high, shorter bond length is with fluorine. When you are going down this group, the atom size is increasing so bond length increases. So it is inversely proportional to energy. If bond length is shorter, bond energy is higher. If bond length is longer, bond energy is lower. Dipole moment, highest one you have with chlorine and then comes fluorine and then bromine and iodine. So these are all the properties of alkyl halides. <coughs> now let us get into the preparation of alkyl halides. Now alkyl halides can be prepared from alcohols, hydrocarbons or by halogen exchange. Again from alcohols, you can prepare alkyl halides by using halogen acids, phosphorus halides or thionyl chloride. Whereas from hydrocarbons, they can be synthesized from alkanes and alkenes. In case of halogen exchange, we have two named reactions <laughs> are there, Finkelstein reaction and Schwarz reaction. Let us explore these reactions now. <coughs> the first one, preparation of alcohols from halogen acids. Now you need to understand this. Halogen acid means hydrofluoric acid, hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic acid and hydroiodic acid. These are what we call it as halogen acids. <coughs> now, from alcohols, when you use halogen acids, the hydroxy group is substituted by a halogen. This is a kind of substitution reaction. So, all these are halogen acids. Now, how do they react? If To understand the reactivity, you need to see the bond energies. See, hydrogen fluoride, the bond is very stronger one. You need very high amount of energy in kilojoules per moles. When you are going down, bond length increases, so the bond energy decreases. This is what we have seen with alkyl halides too, but this is with halogen acids. 
see all of them can release H plus that is why they are called as halogen acids now when you are going down the bond length increases so bond energy decreases if bond energy is decreased this can easily come out as I minus and this is what gets substituted here so the reactivity is very high with hydrogen iodide why because releasing I minus is very easy here after that comes bromide after that comes chloride now whereas hydrogen fluoride is not usually used the reason is very high bond energy not only that hydrogen fluoride involves in intermolecular hydrogen bonds intermolecular -mole hydrogen bonds that means HF forms a hydrogen bond with another HF again this forms hydrogen bond with HF so because of this intermolecular hydrogen bonding the bond strength increases and it is very difficult to get fluoride anion so that is the reason why HF is not used but iodide bromides and chlorides are used so this is the reactivity pattern coming to alcohols how do they react you have methyl reactivity is less than primary alcohol is less than secondary alcohol is less than tertiary alcohol so reactivity increases in this order that means tertiary alcohols react rapidly the reactivity of tertiary is greater than secondary is greater than primary I hope you understand what you mean by primary, secondary and tertiary. To this carbon, if one alkyl group is attached, one, so it is primary. Two alkyl groups attached, secondary. Three alkyl groups attached, tertiary. <coughs> Why is this happening? See, when alcohol, see this OH need to be substituted with a halogen. So that means OH needs to come out with electron, OH minus. When it is coming out with electron, it generates a positive charge here. So this is what happens. See. In case of methyl, a methyl cation, primary carbocation, secondary carbocation, tertiary carbocation. Now carbon is having a charge. Now remember this, any atom when it contains a charge, it will be a little bit unstable. Otherwise, there is no stabilizing factors are there. What do you mean by this stabilizing factor? Look at this. This carbon has got a positive charge. It is surrounded with three alkyl groups. The nature of alkyl groups is electron donating, positive inductive effect they will donate electrons so what happens because of that the positive charge is neutralized by this electron donating methyl groups so the charge is stabilized so this one is formed easy when this one is formed easy means it reacts immediately why the reaction involves formation of carbocation in case of secondary you have only two methyl groups this is also formed but less than tertiary carbocation primary is very less because only one stabilizing electron donating methyl group is there and methyl is not at all formed because there is no other stabilizing group is there so this is what is important formation of carbocation gets easy in case of tertiary than secondary than primary so the order follows like this now again understand this order in case of halogen acids it is this order hydroidic acid reacts faster in case of alcohols it is this order tertiary carbocation reacts faster now <coughs> let us understand how the reaction goes on see primary carbocation, secondary carbocation, tertiary carbocation. Now, this is alkyl chloride formation. To get this, this reagent is used, hydrochloric acid along with <coughs> zinc chloride. This reagent is known as Lucas reagent. Lucas reagent. See, in case of primary and secondary, as we have seen, the alcohols will not react faster like tertiary one. For tertiary alcohol, only HCl is enough to give alkyl halide. In case of primary and secondary, it needs Lucas reagent which includes zinc chloride. Now zinc chloride attaches with OH and make sure OH is coming out easily. So that is what is the work of zinc chloride. Now how the reaction takes place, OH needs to come out and chloride need to get substituted there. That is what happens here. So this combination of HCl and ZnCl is known as Lucas reagent. Now understand this. For primary and secondary, you need the help of Lucas reagent. For tertiary, you don't need Lucas reagent. ZnCl2 is not required. Why? Because the reactivity is very rapid. In fact, Lucas reagent is used to differentiate between tertiary, secondary and primary alcohols. How? Let us see this. See, the reagent is anhydrous zinc chloride and hydrochloric acid concentrated. Now understand this, hydra means water. Anhydrous means without water. It is used without water. So this is what is the reagent. 
Now understand one more thing. See, generally alcohols are soluble in Lucas reagent, while their halides are immiscible and produce turbidity in solution. That means in Lucas reagent, these alcohols are soluble, but these halides are not soluble. They give immiscible turbidity solutions. So when you use alcohol with Lucas test, if immediately turbidity or cloudiness is formed, it indicates it is a tertiary alcohol. Why? Because the reactivity is rapid, immediately alcohol is converted to halide and the halide is insoluble so it gives a turbidity. Whereas if the cloudiness or turbidity happens in 10 minutes, they are secondary alcohols. If cloudiness appears only on heating, see primaries are very uh, less reactive so they, the reaction happens only upon heating, then it becomes primary one. So this is what is Lucas test is. <coughs> but understand the important point. So alcohols can be converted into alkyl halides with the use of Lucas reagent. In case of tertiary, only HCl is enough, hydrochloric acid is enough. Now again, alkyl halides, there are two types of preparations are there. See, HCl is available as gas. This gas can be directly pumped into alcoholic solution. At room temperature, it is converted into alkyl halide gas. HCl is also available as aqueous liquid form, hydrochloric acid, aqueous form. Now when you are using this aqueous form, it is mixed with alcohol and it is heated to get alkyl halide. So again there is a difference between gaseous form and liquid form. Gaseous form, just mix it at room temperature, you will get alkyl halide, but in aqueous form it needs heating. So this is, this is about Lucas reagent and converting alcohols to alkyl halides by using <coughs> what this is, hydrogen halides. Now the next one, we have seen about alkyl chlorides, now alkyl bromides, see unlike HCl gas, HBr and HI are not available as such, they need to be prepared, I am repeating this, unlike HCl gas, HBr and HI are not available readily, they need to be prepared, how? Sodium bromide is combined with sulfuric acid, when they are heated you get sodium hydrogen sulfate and hydrogen bromide and this reacts with alcohol, reflexing means boiling. Boiling, 48% of hydrobromic acid gives brome, bromoethane. So unlike hydrochloric acid, it is not available, so it is prepared with these two reactions and it is reflexed. Similarly, alkyl iodides are also prepared from potassium iodide and phosphoric acid. It gives hydroiodic acid and that is reflexed with alcohol, which gives iodides. So a little bit different. Hydrochloric acid is readily available, but hydrobromic acid and hydroidic acid need to be prepared by these reactions. Take screenshots of this to get the clarity. <coughs> Moving further. Now, preparation from alcohols, we have seen with hydro, hydrogen halide acids, now using phosphorus halides. In case of chlorine, you have PCLT, phosphorus trichloride and phosphorus pentachloride are there. So when these are used, they form corresponding alkyl chlorides. If PCL3 is used, it gives phosphoric acid. With PCL5, you get phosphorus oxychloride. Now, again, <coughs> see, PBR5 and PI5 are not available. They are very unstable, so you don't have any reaction with that. But PBR3 or PI3 are prepared in situ. In situ means in the reaction mixer itself because they are also very unstable. If you prepare priorly because of their highly reactivity, they are unstable and they will not be there. So in the reaction itself, they have made by taking alcohol and red phosphorus and on that when bromine or iodine are used, tribromides or triiodides are formed. And they act on this alcohol and convert into alkyl halides. So again here, PCL5, PCL3. For chlorine, you have these two reagents are there. For bromine and iodine, they are prepared in situ, in the reaction itself, if they are prepared, it is called as in situ preparation. How, how are they prepared? By using halogen gases on red phosphorus. Now, the last one, alcohols are converted to alkyl halides by using thionyl chloride. Thionyl chloride is SOCl2. So this is the best method to prepare chloroethane. Why? Look at the reaction. When ethanol reacts thi with thionyl chloride in presence of pyridine, it forms chloroethane and sulfur dioxide, which is a gas, hydrogen chloride, which is also a gas. Because both of them are gases, they will escape easily, leaving only alkyl halide, pure alkyl halide as such. So this is a very good advantage. When you have a reaction going on, isolating the required alkyl halide becomes a 
big issue in industries. In this case, because all, both the gases are escaping from the reaction, isolating alkyl halide is very easy. Now, this method is known as Dargent's method. So, this is the best method to prepare alkyl chlorides. Now, bromides and iodides cannot be prepared because thionyl bromide is unstable, whereas thionyl iodide does not exist. So, this method is suitable for only alkyl chlorides. Again, the important thing is sulfur dioxide, hydrogen chloride are in gaseous states. They readily leave the reaction mixture leaving alkyl chloride. In fact, pure alkyl chloride. So, this is how alcohols are converted to alkyl halides. Now, the next one, preparation from hydrocarbons. Now, hydrocarbons like from alkanes, this is a free radical substitution reaction. Alkanes are taken, halogens in presence of UV light or in presence of heat react. But the problem is you get polychlorinated substances. <clears throat> isomers will be there. Pure alkyl halides getting is not possible because free radicals react vigorously. So this is not a good method to prepare individual alkyl halides, but we need to understand what happens when alkanes are converted to alkyl halides. So the mechanism is free radical substitution. Again, when you see the reactivity, fluorine are highly reactive, then chlorine, then bromine and iodine. Again, the reactivity is because of atom sizes. The moment you increase the atom size, reactivity reduces. Now understand this, why is it happening? See, because it is a free radical reaction, the fluorine will have a free, free radical which is looking to get one more electron. Now, because fluorine atom is smaller one, the smaller atom one will have a nucleus with a positive charge which will try to attract an electron. When you increase the size, when you increase the size in place of iodine, what happens? The nucleus will be farther away from these valency shells, so the attraction force will be reduced, so reactivity reduces. So when atomic size is increased, reactivity reduces. In fact, usually for free radical substitution, fluorine is not used because it reacts very violently and explosion may occur. So violent that it may result in explosion. Similarly, iodine is not used because it is very less reactive. So the very popularly used one are only chlorine and bromine. And the process is free radical substitution, but the problem is isomers poly halo alkanes will result so this is not a good method now the next method is from alkanes now from alkanes it can be prepared in two methods by using hydrogen halides and by using halogen gases hydrogen halides same hydroidic uh, uh, hydrogen halides are used on alkene and you get hydrohalogenation again there are two different types of alkenes are there symmetric and asymmetric Understand these simple words. Symmetric means around this double bond, equal number of carbons are there. See, around this double bond, one, one carbons are there. Asymmetric means, look at this, around this double bond here, two carbons and one carbon is there. This is called as asymmetric. Now, in case of symmetric, you get only one product. But in case of asymmetric alkenes, you get two different products. Look at this. This is the major one, this is the minor one. Why is this happening? The reason is something called as Markovnikov's rule. Look at this. This is propane reacting with hydrogen bromide. Now, bromine may get attached to this second carbon or may attach to first carbon. Let us understand a little bit of mechanism. What happens is, initially HBr, the hydrogen can go and attach here. When it attaches here, this bond goes here and carbon will have a positive charge. This is what results. What is this uh, uh, This one carbon with a positive charge? is a carbocation. This is a primary carbocation. Now, the hydrogen can go and attach here also. If it happens, you get a carbocation here and this is secondary carbocation. See, we have already seen in case of alcohols, carbocations, which one, which one is uh, uh, most favorably formed? Tertiary one is favorably formed and then secondary one. So this is more stable and the formation of this carbocation is easier. So what happens with that? Bromine goes, attaches here, and you get this product, which is a major one. This is what is Markovnikov's rule is. Markovnikov's rule, in this case, in hydrohalogenation, hydrogens attaches to the carbon with more hydrogen, see here, because it favors the formation of secondary carbocation, which is more stable. Hence, this product is major one because of stability. This is what is called as Markovnikov's rule. So in case of alkenes, symmetric alkenes, you don't have any problem. Asymmetric, you have two products are there. The major one is because of carbocation stability. Now, 
The last method is halogen exchange. Understand this one. See, one alkyl halide can be converted into different alkyl halide. So this is what is called as halogen exchange. This halogen is exchanged with this halogen. Now, there is a name for this reaction, it is called as Finkelstein reaction and this happens in presence of dry acetone. We need to understand this. This is the best method to form alkyl iodides. Why only alkyl iodides? The reason is differential solubility. See, the solvent which is used here is dry acetone. Acetone, if you see, acetone is this one, CH3. CO, CH3. See, acetone is a polar solvent because oxygen pulls the electrons and it gets a negative charge and positive charge. But protons are not there. It is called as aprotic polar solvent. Now, the advantage with acetone is sodium iodide is dissolved in acetone but not sodium bromide or sodium chloride. Look at this. See, sodium chloride and sodium bromide are insoluble, whereas acetone is soluble. Because it is soluble, it can react with alkyl halide and forms alkyl iodides, and it forms the corresponding sodium bromide and iodides, and they will get precipitated out. Precipitated out means removed out. Now, once this is precipitated and removed out, the reaction is favored in forward direction. This is called Le Chatelier principle. Forward reaction is favored. Let us see the glimpse of Le Chatelier principle. See, if stress is applied to a system at equilibrium, the position of equilibrium will shift in direction which reduces stress. Let us simplify this. Let's say you have A and B are reacting and it is in equilibrium. It is forming C plus D. Stress is applied means if you remove, if you take out this D immediately. So what is happening? The stress is applied in this direction. Here the molecules are more, here this is less and D is removed. So the forward reaction is forward and the reaction goes to generate more of D. So that is what is stress applied. So this stress could be in three ways. One, by changing concentration. See, you have removed D, decreased concentration, so reaction is forward in forward direction. Or by changing pressure. If you put pressure here, reaction goes in this direction to relieve the pressure. Or by increasing temperature. You increase the temperature here, forward reaction is forward. So this is what is Le Chatelier principle is. So look at this, what happens here is, so this is an equilibrium reaction and this, these are precipitated and removed out, so the reaction is favored in forward di direction. So this is called Le Chatelier principle. So the gist, now, now the next one is in halogen uh, exchange, one more reaction is there, it is called as Swartz reaction. Now in this Swartz reaction is the best method to prepare alkyl fluorides. Now how it happens? Alkyl halides, again this is a, a fluoride is exchanged with other halides. Usually metallic fluorides are used like silver fluoride, mercuric fluoride, cobalt fluoride and antimony fluoride. When they are mixed, when they are heated you get alkyl fluoride and the corresponding metal halide. So this is the method, best method to prepare alkyl fluorides and the reaction is known as Swartz reaction. The gist is, see, the best methods to prepare alkyl halides. Alkyl chlorides can be best prepared by combining alcohol with thionyl chloride. Why? The, the byproducts HCl and SO2 are gases and you get pure alkyl halide. Alkyl iodides can be prepared by Finkelstein reaction. Alkyl fluorides are prepared by Swartz reaction. So this is about preparation and properties of alkyl halides. In the next video, I will explain about preparation of haloarenes. Thank you for watching this video. If you like the video, do subscribe and share.